Welcome to Ministry in Motion, a program where we explore best practices in your ministry for the 21st century. I'm Anthony Kent. And I'm Derek Morris. Whether you live in Australia or Austria, in the United States of America or the United Kingdom, God wants you to be a great Christian leader. Whether you're a full-time pastor or a lay leader of your Christian fellowship, God wants to use you to impact your world. Today, we have a unique opportunity to talk with our co-host, Derek Morris, about an area of his passion and expertise, powerful biblical preaching. Derek, welcome. Thanks so much, Anthony. Derek, you've had a, a, a long history and a long experienced history with preaching and teaching pre preaching. Would you like to share just a little of that with us to, to, to begin? Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I began preaching about 35 years ago and uh, someone told me I looked so nervous I was afraid that the pulpit was going to run away. So that was my uh, beginning. I realized quickly that in order to be an effective communicator of the Word of God, I needed to learn. But unfortunately, I didn't know where to go. So my journey has been one of seeking places, learning principles, practicing preaching. You're right, I've taught preaching for about 10 years, both on an undergraduate and a graduate level. But I've discovered it's a lot easier to teach preaching than to preach well. Interesting. There are some principles. It takes discipline to implement those in your preaching in order to preach powerful biblical sermons. That's what I'd, I'd like to share with the Ministry of Motion today. Fantastic. Now, when, when you were looking for a place to, to build your, your preaching ministry, Derek, who was the person or where was the place that, that you went to? Well, that's an important question. And actually, it really is the basis of our presentation today because I, I went to the preaching ministry of Jesus and I carefully analyzed how Jesus communicated powerful biblical messages. And I gleaned nine lessons from the preaching ministry of Jesus. Now, we can learn from other uh, Christian authors about effective communication, but I think these nine lessons will be very helpful, whether it's an experienced pastor who's joining us today or someone just learning how to communicate God's Word. Yeah, I'm delighted, Derek. I'm glad you went to Jesus as that ultimate source. Why, why don't you lead us then into these, these nine principles? What's the first one? Well, as I read the preaching ministry of Jesus, I discovered that Jesus preached in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When he began his ministry in Luke chapter 4 records that he quote, quoted the prophet Isaiah. And he said in Luke 4 and verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. Yeah goes on to talk about his ministry. But I think sometimes people, they say, well, give me some practical ways to be a powerful preacher. The first important lesson I learned from the ministry of Jesus is I need to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So preaching, even for Jesus, wasn't an isolated experience. It was, it's something that he was empowered to do and anointed by the Holy Spirit. It, and it was directly related to his personal connection with God. Yeah. So he wasn't just a public speaker, yeah. but he was one divinely blessed yeah. to preach uh, heaven's message. That's, that's a, a great insight, Derek. So that comes, comes from Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And I think his disciples caught on to that. They recognize the importance of speaking in the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it says in the book of Acts, they went out, they proclaimed the word of God boldly. Yes. And that's not talking about a human boldness, but a holy boldness. And even that original audience there of Jesus in his hometown of Nazareth, they recognized that there was something extraordinary. Isn't this... Joseph's son, they were asking. There was something different about Jesus and, when, when and he had that. That's Holy right. And, and even after the great Sermon on the Mount, they marveled because he spoke as one having authority. Yeah. It doesn't say just that he was eloquent. Yeah. There was authority. And that authority comes from the blessing of the Holy Spirit upon a person's ministry and upon his or her preaching. Yeah, yeah. That's an excellent point then, Derek. So the, the significance of the Holy Spirit is the first go-to place in terms of 
powerful biblical preaching. And I remember one of my students, Anthony, who was a mediocre preacher. <laughs> and he said, I don't want to be mediocre or even average. I want to be excellent for God. And he told me he went out into the forest and he cried out to God and said, God, whatever you need to do in my life, that you can work in me and through me in a powerful way, I'm willing. That total surrender to the will of God and to allow the Holy Spirit to use you, that you don't worry about what people think about you, but only what they think about Jesus. Yeah. That liberated him. Do you know the next semester, this, his fellow students were stunned at how powerfully he preached. Mm. In fact, he was chosen by his class as the outstanding preacher of the class. Wow. So he went from mediocrity to preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that can happen for each preacher, whether a full-time pastor or a lay preacher who says, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can preach in the power of the Spirit. And you know, that seems to be reflected in the New Testament as well. When, when the people saw that the disciples of the apostles were ordinary, unschooled, uneducated men, but they'd been with Jesus in a sense, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and there was a transformation that came over them. That's right. And so if our viewers today, if, if the only lesson we remember from today is don't ever stand up and preach without the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. That would, that would change our preaching ministry, move us to a whole nother level of effectiveness for God. That's exactly right. Well, why don't you briefly lead us into the second point, Derek? What's the second point? Someone's saying, well, have you got some principles for writing my sermon yet? But as I look at the preaching ministry of Jesus, the second important principle or lesson is that Jesus bathed his sermon preparation and delivery in prayer. Okay. I was reading in the Gospel of Mark. It's a text that is often read to, to show that Jesus was much in prayer. And it speaks in Mark chapter 1 how in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place and there he prayed. Uh, many Christians are familiar with that text. And certainly if we were speaking about the importance of a devotional life, we would say Jesus was much in prayer. We should be much in prayer. But sometimes we ignore the context. In the context, it has to do with going out to preach. Yes, yeah. So uh, prayer empowered Jesus preaching as well. That's right, because he said he was preaching in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and casting out demons. So prayer comes before powerful preaching. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. We're exploring nine principles of powerful biblical preaching that Jesus emulated in his ministry. And we're doing this with Derek Morris. Derek, we're at point two and we're looking at the importance of prayer in the ministry of Jesus. That's right. He was very much in prayer. We looked in Mark 1, got up early and prayed, but then it says he went out and preached powerfully. So I think there's a lesson. We're not only preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit, but we're bathing our sermon preparation and delivery in prayer. That's why you see the great preachers like Paul saying, would you pray for me mm. that I may proclaim the word of God boldly as I should? Mm. So that awareness that we need to continue earnestly in prayer a person says, I don't have time to pray. I need to prepare my sermon. I would say prayer is an essential part of the preparation, not only of the sermon, but of the preacher. So, so bathing your sermon in preparation and delivery in prayer is an essential second lesson from the preaching ministry of Jesus. Okay. So would you like to lead us into the third? Well, as I was looking at the preaching ministry of Jesus, I also noticed that he preached the word of God rather than human opinions. You don't hear Jesus quoting uh, the rabbis of his day, for example. Mm. He fa in fact, he says in his prayer in John 17, I have given them your word. Mm -hmm. So th this communication that God calls us to give is based upon the divine word of God. Mm. That is why back to that text in Acts 4 that talks about praying first, it says they went out 
and preached the Word of God boldly. Yeah. So I just want to appeal to pastors and lay preachers to fill their hearts with the Word of God because I believe that powerful biblical preaching is an overflow, if you will, mm -hmm. of being filled with the Word of God. Jesus was, he was the Word in the flesh and, and He proclaimed the Word. He wants us to do the same thing. And it adds an extra dimension to the, the power of inspiration that the, the very content of their sermons was inspired as well. Absolutely. We, we see that demonstrated by the, not only Jesus, but the early apostles as well. Um, even the early deacon, Stephen. Who was a powerful preacher of the Word of God. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So just recapping, we have the, the importance of Preaching the, Holy the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. We have the prayer. Bathing your preparation and delivery. So you're praying even while you're preaching. Right. And, and then you're communicating the Word of God, not just your own opinion. Yeah, not, not just theories or... Or what I think. Exactly. That's yeah. right. But it's yeah. the Word of God. Okay. So there's a fourth lesson now. And again, th this isn't spelled out in one chapter in the Bible. But as I came to the Word and said, what can I learn from the preaching ministry of Jesus? A, a fourth important lesson for powerful biblical preaching is to communicate God's grace. Okay. The people marveled, it says, at the gracious words that proceeded from the mouth of Jesus. John says he was full of grace yes. and truth. Yes. And, and as I read the letters that the early Christian leaders wrote, they, they constantly said grace to you, mm. grace to you. I don't think that was just a polite greeting there was this earnest desire that the, the grace of God that had been revealed in Jesus would be experienced in the lives of the hearers. So I would ask myself the question, as I'm thinking about powerful biblical preaching, is my message filled with the grace of God? So you're saying that that really needs to be the essence of the message? Well, uh, it needs to be a key ingredient. Right. Uh, one one preacher, a teacher of preaching said, there needs to be both a word of judgment and a word of grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a judgment where I'm not in harmony with God as I should be, or yeah. I need a savior, but then give me some good news. Yes. So whatever the message, I may be preaching a story from the Old Testament or a parable of Jesus or a teaching passage from one of the epistles, but each of those messages must be communicating God's grace. Of course. And even the judgment message, that has the, the grace in it. Absolutely, because we have a Savior. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the significance of grace, it's a, it's a wonderful experience to be able to proclaim that, isn't it? And of course, that's why Jesus should be lifted up in every sermon. Yes. That doesn't mean every sermon is about the last week of the life of Jesus, but Jesus is God's grace yes. brought down to our human family. And Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men to me. At least everyone will have an opportunity to either accept God's grace or to reject it, to turn away from it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Derek, are you, are you ready for the, the, the fifth one? And the fifth lesson may surprise some because we may not think of Jesus as being such a powerful communicator. Mm -hmm. But the fifth lesson that I learned from the preaching ministry of Jesus is to be aware of your audience. Jesus recognizes that effective communication is not a monologue, but yes. a dialogue. Yes. It's not a conveyor belt, but it's more of a circle, a, a loop, where one is hearing and responding back. Jesus demonstrates an awareness of his audience. An example is when he's speaking in Nazareth, and they marvel at the gracious words proceeding from his mouth. But then some change occurs in their body language. It doesn't say it in the text, but it's revealed by the word of Jesus. He says, you're thinking to yourself, physician, heal yourself. Mm. Do hear mm -hmm. what you did in Capernaum. Mm. In other words, he reads that while their words say, this is really good, yes. their body language is resisting him. Yes. So Jesus is um, sensitive to the responses of his hearers. And we see that uh, lesson learned with the apostles. Mm 
Let me give you one example. Peter and the other apostles preaching on the day of Pentecost. And, and Peter is boldly proclaiming that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. And conviction comes upon the hearts of the hearers. If you read the chapter carefully, and I know you have a special interest in the book of Acts, but if you read the chapter carefully, he's not finished with his sermon. That's right. Because later it says, with many other words, he exhorted them, mm -hmm. save yourself from this mm -hmm. evil generation. Yeah. But, but he sees their body language. Yeah. In fact, they even speak. They say, brethren, what, what shall we do? Yeah. And, and Peter doesn't say, well, wait, I'm not finished with my sermon, right? He's, he's sensitive to, to the response of his audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be, be aware of your audience. And, and he says, repent. Exactly. And be baptized, every one of you. The promise is for you and for your children. And then he goes on and says, kind of finishes his sermon. If we need to be aware of our audience, Anthony, then we need to get away from reading a sermon manuscript. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge challenge for me. But after about 15 years of, of preaching with a sermon manuscript, I said, if, if communication is important, I've got to get past that paper. That doesn't mean we don't discipline ourselves to write a manuscript, mm -hmm. but the step beyond that is preaching without notes. And if some of our uh, viewers are interested in that, we can put a, a resource on our ministryinmotion.tv website about preaching without notes. But I think to be aware of your audience, you've got to be looking at them. Precisely. You've got to be reading them or, or learning from them. Derek, we want to come back and explore this some more. We'll be right back with Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. We're exploring nine lessons from the preaching ministry of Jesus with Derek Morris. Derek, we've covered how many now? Well, I think we've covered five. Right. And if we just had those five, it, it would impact us in a powerful way. Preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit, right. bathing your sermon preparation and delivery in prayer, communicating the Word of God rather than just human opinions, yes. communicating God's grace, and being aware of your audience. Right. But okay. these last four are also crucially important, Anthony. Okay. Uh, one which, which all teachers of preaching and rhetoric would agree with is to use a single memorable statement. Okay. A single memorable statement. That means one sentence that you expect your hearers to remember. Mm. Now, that sentence should be simple rather than complex. It should be positive rather than negative. I see a great example when Jesus preaches the sermon about the bread from heaven. Mm. And his single sentence is, I am the bread of life. Mm. Now, obviously, if I was preaching that, I would have to say, Jesus is the bread of life. Yeah. But that single sentence needs to be clear and clearly stated. Mm -hmm. Someone has asked me, well, how many times should you say it in order for it to stick? One time, I say, well, if you did, you'd have to really highlight it and say, mm -hmm. if you forget everything else, remember this. But probably you're going to have to say it more than one time, mm -hmm. which actually brings us to the seventh, uh, excuse me, the, the, yeah, the, the seventh, seventh lesson, which is to use repetition and restatement. Okay. If you look in John 6, Jesus doesn't say that single preaching idea just once. Mm -hmm. He says again, I think in verse 48 of John 6, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. He said it in verse 35, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. So I repeat the same sentence. And I've found that you may want to repeat that six, eight times during your message, especially as you're drawing to a close, you're driving home that single idea. And it's making it memorable That's for, right. for each person. You know, John Stott, who was a powerful British cleric, he said, I don't expect them to remember everything I say, but yeah. I do expect them to remember that single dominant thought. That's mm -hmm. what he called it, mm -hmm. that one sentence. Now, Jesus, step seven, uses repetition and restatement. Mm -hmm. That's where you say that single memorable thought in different words. Just tweak it a little. Mm -hmm. So you read John 6. He said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. But in another place, he says, I am the living bread. Mm -hmm. Or I am the bread that came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. So I might say, Jesus can forgive all of your sins. I could then say, there's nothing that you've done that Jesus is not willing to forgive if you ask him. 
Right. You may think you've done too much, but you can still come and be forgiven. Jesus can forgive all of your sins. You see how we restated, but drive home that idea. When people hear that single memorable statement, a light goes on in their mind mm -hmm. because we really want to hear what you're saying. Maybe you've had a person talking to you and you go, what are you trying to say? Well, our hearers are thinking the same thing when a person preaches. And once they grasp that single memorable statement, it will stick with them. And I can then use repetition and restatement to drive it home. Right, okay. So what's the next lesson that lesson we learned from Jesus? Yes. Find practical illustrations. Mm -hmm. I remember one time a student of preaching said to me, I don't use illustrations, I, I, I just preach the word. That's courageous, isn't it? And I thought, what an insult to the preaching ministry of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus used illustrations all of the time. In fact, Matthew says he never preached without using a parable or an illustration. Mm -hmm. So if you read the Gospels, Jesus is drawing illustrations from everyday life. Mm -hmm. Agrarian society, he talks about sowing seed. At, by the lake, he talks about catching fish. He, he sees a building going up. He talks about counting the cost before you build a building. And they're all so graphic, aren't they? You, they are. They're, and they're, they're, they're right where people live. Yes. Sometimes people say, Derek, what's the best book of illustrations? And I said, there is no book that's best. Books are detached from where people live. The best place to find an illustration is where your life and the life of your hearer are interconnected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talk about something that's going on in your community, uh, in, in your environment. That's the place to find good illustrations. And so that makes it practical. It, absolutely, it does. And someone told me one time, there's no such thing as a good illustration. I said, what do you mean? They said, there's only a good illustration of something. Mm -hmm. So I have to have that single memorable statement in mind. If it is Jesus can save you, then an illustration that talks about being saved or rescued mm -hmm. fits. Mm -hmm. You say, well, I had this other great story. Well, does it relate to the fact that Jesus can save you? No. Well, discard it or save it for another time. Mm -hmm. So once I've got that single idea in my mind, it helps me to recognize an effective illustration. Right. Now, Derek, lead us through the, 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 the last lesson. And this one is crucially important, Anthony, for powerful biblical preaching. Remember, we started our journey by saying, what can we learn from the preaching ministry of Jesus? Yes. Jesus, lesson number nine, called for radical life change. Okay. He didn't just say, well, I'm finished. Did you like my sermon? Yeah. He called people to respond. Example, the great Sermon on the Mount. And at the end, he said, if you hear my words and do them, you're like a wise person who built on rock. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're like a foolish person. And so he was calling. By the way, it says they marveled after that. He spoke with authority. Mm -hmm. Because really, if you've heard truth in your heart, you know that you need to respond. Mm -hmm. So whether you're calling a person to go home and write a letter to someone that they've hurt and, and, and ask for forgiveness, or you're encouraging them to share the love of Jesus with someone, by calling for a specific response, you increase the impact on their lives and through them to people around them. You seem to be describing a, a life-changing experience. With, that's with right, and, and, and that's what the ministry of Jesus is all about. Yeah. As he came preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit, right. bathing his sermon preparation and delivery in prayer, preaching the word of God rather than human opinions, communicating God's grace, being aware of his audience, using a single memorable statement, using repetition and restatement, finding practical illustrations, and then calling for a life response, Jesus was a powerful biblical preacher. And I think if we take those nine principles and apply them, and every time I share it with a, a preaching conference, I'm reminded that mm -hmm. each one of those is vitally important. Derek, those nine lessons, they're ever so helpful. I've been blessed as a result. Those nine simple lessons that are biblical, biblically based that each preacher, whether they're a, a volunteer preacher or a, a full-time salaried pastor, we can all benefit from embracing and absorbing into our ministries those, those nine valuable lessons. That's right. Thanks ever so much. It's been an honor to be with you, Anthony. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to your company next time, Ministry in Motion. Mm -hmm.